My name is Tafadzwa Antonita Choto. I'm uh, the director of Zimbabwe Labour Center. I've been an activist for the past 15 to 17 years. Zimbabwe Labour Center provides legal aid, legal assistance to workers, trade unions who cannot afford high fees by the lawyers. We also have a working people's college where we teach workers their rights, uh, a diploma, a certificate and diploma level. And uh, right now we want to teach them about technology, how they can communicate with and share their experiences with other workers throughout the world. We also have uh, an advocacy department and uh, we've been uh, advocating for a new constitution that has got workers' rights. And currently, uh, comrades in Zimbabwe are doing a campaign of defending uh, energy workers who were um, fired for demanding um, that the, their employers respect the arbitration they had been awarded. Now coming to my story of arrest, on the 19th of uh, February last year, in 2011, we organized a meeting at Zimbabwe Labor Center to discuss the events that had taken place in Zimbabwe, I mean in Egypt and Tunisia, and what lessons for Zimbabwe and the rest of Africa, especially for workers and the ordinary people in the view that we're writing a new constitution. Uh, we had speakers from uh, uh, trade unions, the workers, uh, students, anti debt activists, and uh, also HIV activists. And uh, when the last speaker was now summarizing, the room was stormed by about uh, eight or so ununiformed police who had told us that we were under arrest, though they didn't tell us the charge, and ordered us to go to the central police station. We went there and uh, they took our names after about an hour. We then called and uh, went to the room. As we were going, that's when we saw that the issue was quite serious because we were being taken to a room that is famous for um, for torture, I was the first one to go in and um, was then accused of wanting to to throw away to remove the Mugabe government. And when I tried to explain that how could forty one people try to have done that, we're just discussing it was just an intellectual meeting. I was then asked to lie down and uh, they started beating me. They were using a broomstick uh, that later broke. Uh, and uh, they took another plank that was in the room and uh, started using that. And uh, during the beatings, they told me that uh, they would only stop once I started my monthly periods to show that I've had enough. And uh, after some time, they stopped and I went and joined the others. We were detained. We were detained the police for about... Um, Three or four or five days uh, from Wednesday to, to th uh, from Saturday to Wednesday. Initially, they wanted to charge about six, seven, six or seven whom they had identified as the organizers, that's the speakers, and I was chairing the meeting uh, and released the other 38. But by Wednesday, they had not done that. And before going to court, we signed warned and cautioned statements for subverting constitutional government. But then when we got to court, we were surprised to hear the magistrate reading treason charges. And uh, it, we, it really sent shivers to most of us. Treason carries a capital punishment, death sentence of oral life imprisonment. And um, we then t told to come back after we were given a, a, a date of coming back. But going back, we were taken into the, into the truck. We were handcuffed, uh, both legs and hands. Um, and then when we got to the prison, uh, there were 11 of us women and the rest were men. Uh, we're taken to the D class, which is the dangerous, <laughs> the dangerous section. And um, life at prison was a bit better in the sense that we could get bathing facilities and also food, though it was not your, your best, but uh, still in kind of better. And uh, after about two and a half or three weeks, uh, 39 people were released. The magistrate stated that uh, the, the state case was very weak and uh, there was no way uh, he could charge all of us. And he felt it was comfortable to remain with the speakers and the chair. And then um, we stayed in prison for about a month and applied for high uh, for bail at the high court we got a bail of 2000 each uh 2000 US dollars that's quite a lot of money um 
and uh, with solidarity support, support that money was raised and uh, and we got out uh, under stringent bail, uh, bail conditions we handed over our passports and had to report to the police Monday, Wednesday and Friday three times a week which was uh, a bit too much uh, the trial was supposed to kick off in uh, July, but uh, it delayed. No magistrate wanted uh, to take uh, the trial because they saw that it had been politicized. Mm -hmm. They just gave an excuse that uh, the first accused he had taught them at the University of Zimbabwe um, is a law lecturer. So the trial kicked off in September and uh, the star witness gave his evidence. During his uh, evidence and cross-examination process, uh, it had so many loopholes. How could he remember something that had taken place in February? He didn't have any notes, no videotape whatsoever. And uh, it just showed that he had rehearsed what he was saying and there was quite a lot of lying. Uh, but what gave us hope during his cross-examination is uh, you could also see the magistrate laughing at some of the things that was being said and um, we, we then said it shows that the, there's no case but um, at the end of his uh, um, evidence uh, our lawyer applied for the discharge then the, the magistrate refused we then started sensing that maybe there's something more we gave our evidence and we cross-examined after that, then uh, both the lawyer and the prosecutor uh, did their closing submissions. It's the prosecutor who's supposed to do first and then give our lawyer, and then our lawyer respond and give to the magistrate. But after the, the prosecutor had done that, uh, the following day there was a big headline in the in, in the state-run newspaper, The Herald, to say that uh, we should be punished heavily uh, for wanting to incite some violence uh, to remove the to remove the government, advocating for about 10 years. That's when we started mobilizing locally and internationally, uh, building up solidarity. And uh, when we went uh, for the day, uh, when we were convicted, uh, the court was full, the courtroom was full, even the building and outside. There were lots of people, all activists, trade unions, students, social movements, and also relatives of, uh, of, the, accused, uh, of, of the accused people. And uh, the magistrate then deferred uh, the conviction to the afternoon. Uh, and then after about two hours, we then saw truckloads of riot police uh, coming and then in the afternoon that's uh, when you said we had been convicted of uh, inciting to commit public violence and uh, were to be sentenced on Wednesday. The state prosecutor then applied for us to be taken to prison and uh, unfortunately the magistrate uh, refused so that gave us more time uh, to build up the campaign uh, to defend uh, the Zim 6, free the Zim 6. And uh, it, it, it went on, uh, and on Wednesday we went. I got to the court a bit late, uh, but not before, uh, before, before it started, because I was preparing my seven-year-old daughter to say, Mommy might not come back. Uh, Mommy will be going to prison and, uh, you know, putting everything in order. My mother was there so that uh, she could uh, remain behind with him. And uh, when we got there, the... the uh, trial kicked off. I was asked by the magistrate to stand, to sit down, luckily. <laughs> and then the first part was really harsh, you know, his deliverance. And uh, we just said, we are now going to prison. And then all of a sudden, the, cha the tone changed to say he had taken several factors into consideration and uh, they might not be need to send us to prison. And then uh, we're made to pay $500 fine, uh, a jail, a suspended jail sentence of two years, um, 420 hours of community service. We then appealed to the High Court to say that uh, we are appealing against the, the conviction because we are not guilty. The state also appealed to say we had been given a lighter sentence, appealing for a harsh, harsh sentence of uh, of eight years. At that time, we also appealed uh, appealed uh, to, for suspension of community service, which was rejected by the magistrate. And then we went to the high court. The high court suspended the community service, but maybe after about 20, 20 hours of community service by by each of the of the six accused. Um, 
the high court judge gave us hope that uh, truly would be proven that we are we are not uh, guilty we are innocent uh, by saying that the state uh, case is very weak um, so right now we are waiting uh, for the appeal to be heard at the high court most likely it will be heard in October but uh, given the that the case was politicized they might uh, try and drag it so that we move towards the elections with a, a with a you know with something hanging over mm -hmm. our heads for us not to be active so it might drag on until next year the elections are likely to be held uh march to uh march earliest latest august um the other option is that it might be heard this year and uh, again politicized to send a message where the first uh, wants to be convicted for political reasons. So it will also be to send messages uh, to, to other people to say if you do this, we'll convict you. So they might uh, uphold the conviction and say we must do the community service or they might say yes, it was lighter. <laughs> they would go for, for the eight years. So that's where the, the situation stands right now. Okay. So Basically, the Mugabe regime is very afraid of an African spring. Yes, they are very afraid of that. And uh, the magistrate even highlighted that uh, if he had delivered the sentence without the right police or even sent us to jail, something big was going to happen in another Egypt. So they, they are very much afraid of it. Okay. What is the position of unions and opposition groups in Zimbabwe at the moment? How powerful are they and, and uh, how are they how are they able to operate it's difficult to operate because now the regime is moving to to arrest again especially last beginning of last year there were quite a lot of arrests and now the violence from what i hear is starting but uh, they are quite strong uh, there's determination on the ground to to fight for a for a better zimbabwe uh, for a democratic society and also uh, for workers rights and how can trade union activists in the UK and Ireland and the rest of the world support their comrades in Zimbabwe? What is the best thing they can do? Well, for our case and also cases of other workers uh, who are being victimized by the system, uh, is firstly financial support. As I said, we're made to pay five, uh, 2,000 bail. Uh, US dollars, 12,000 for all of us. So we need money in case uh, we might need to ap apply for a bill and also money to run the, the campaign. And secondly, the solidarity support that we got um, as we moved towards the the sentencing helped uh, to to send a message to the regime that they, everyone is watching is watching them. So it's kind of helped uh, not being sent to prison. So we also appreciate the solidarity support, whether demonstrations, petitions, or anything that keeps on pressure on the, on the government.